Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. My name is Julie Boye and I'm gonna be introducing this webinar and um, you'll be hearing very shortly from my special guest, Larissa Robinson. So just before we get into the interview that we're gonna do, let's talk a little bit about what the program is. So the 30 Day Whole Body Detox is a healthy whole food program that we're, will nourish your body at the cellular level. We do have a website, you can visit 30dayholebodydetox.com, which actually gives you all of the program details, all of the pricing is there, everything you need to know about the program can be found online. So if I don't explain everything tonight and you have more questions, you can visit that, or of course invite the person who invited you to watch this video uh, or the recording. So a little bit about me, um, I founded this program back in 2012, working with a naturopath and a holistic nutritionist, and it was for my own need. I really needed a program to help me get off gluten, and I was nervous to do that because I'm a vegetarian, actually I'm almost a vegan. So I decided to do a program that would eliminate uh, dairy, gluten, uh, and other wheat products, as well as eliminate caffeine, alcohol, uh, and refined sugar for 30 days, just to see how I would feel. The first year I took about 12, maybe 20 people through the program, and this past year, uh, in 2016, we took, there was close to about maybe 400 people who did the program in the spring, so it's pretty exciting. So this picture just shows actually in 2014 how I had become addicted to sugar over the winter, and I needed the program just as desperately as my clients, so it really, um, you can tell my eyes are all puffy. I have my stomach, you know, is hanging over my pants. Like it was not a pretty picture. And then um, after the program, my mental clarity returned. I just had so much more energy. So sometimes even the founder of the program needs the program herself. So if you're thinking about whether or not you need to detox, uh, what I want you to ask yourself is how do I feel right now? So do you have digestive issues? Are you feeling bloated after you eat? Do you have frequent colds? This is really important as we go into the winter season. Do you have low energy? And do you feel like you just have those last few unwanted pounds? Are you walking around in a brain fog? Or do you just have a total lack of motivation? So the benefits of the program include uh, better sleep, you do tend to shed some weight. It's anywhere between two and 13 pounds is what I've seen in the 30 days. The average is about seven pounds. Reducing inflammation, uh, clearer radiant skin. You can absolutely tell when someone's on the detox because their skin has changed. It imp improves your mental clarity. Uh, it will definitely improve your digestion. You will get optimal cellular nutrition and you will have that energy boost that we're all looking for. So what are you avoiding during this program? So as I mentioned, there are there's no dairy and no wheat or gluten products, no caffeine, um, and no alcohol. We also ask you to limit the amount of red meat. We actually, there's a chapter in the book about how to choose your meat. And um, there are a few recipes that have 70% dark chocolate in it, but we, again, we're asking you to eliminate refined sugar. The good news is there's so many beautiful things that you can include in this program. So basically any fruits and vegetables are on the menu. Um, corn and soy are limited based on your own personal um, preferences. Some people don't digest corn. Well, most people don't digest corn anyways. So there's not really a lot of corn in our recipes. Uh, and the soy, if you uh, choose not to eat soy, it does, it's not required for the program. But if you like soy, like me, then you can include it. Healthy fats, um, chicken, turkey, fish. There's all kinds of different recipes. There's even um, a comfort food this year. There's a, 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 sh a healthy shepherd's pie. So you're and you're doing things for yourself like yoga, meditation, um, walking, whatever you need to do to be mindful as well. So what do you get when you enroll in the program? Well, you do get the guidebook, which is, uh, it's over 100 pages, and it has so many incredible leaders in nutrition and health. Uh, there's a juicing chapter. There's uh, actually there's 11 different chapters here from all of these amazing experts. 
You also get supplement support. So our product partner for the program is USANA Health Sciences. So I am a distributor for USANA and have been for the past almost 11 years now. And so your coach as well will be a USANA distributor and they will help you to get the USANA products that go with the program. Now, it is a food-based program, but the reason we supplement, um, it, there's so many different reasons, but it really helps support your digestion uh, and your body through the detox program. So the core products, which are on the top of the line, are the USANA's New Cell Essentials, the Biomega Fish Oil. Uh, that's why I say I'm not quite vegan, because I do use this fish oil. Uh, the next a uh, green bottle is called HEPA Plus. It is a liver support supplement, so super, super important when you're doing a gentle detox. Uh, USANA's probiotic, and you need to order two of these boxes because they only come with 14 sticks. It is powder and stable at room temperature. And then you get one bag of the My Smart Food plant protein, which has zero added sugar and eight grams of fiber, and it's pea and potato protein. So those are the supplement support that you get for the program. And then on the lower side, those are some optional products that you can add um, if you want to sort of up-level your program or if you're really, like if you have a lot of bowel issues, for example, Fiber-G, the extra fiber from USANA, that's really going to be important for sure. So we get, we have a lot of expert support. So of course myself, who is the founder of the program and has been in nutrition and health for almost 11 years, uh, Olinka Trejo, who is a naturopathic doctor, she wrote, um, I think, five or six pages at the beginning of the detox book, and she speaks once a year at our live event in the spring. Uh, Erica Mattia, who is uh, trained as a chiropractor but is no longer working in that field, she actually uh, really is passionate about health and nutrition, so she's focusing on that more these days with USANA. Stephanie Morrison, she is a um, registered holistic nutritionist. Uh, Linda Heredia, another registered holistic nutritionist. Sarah Fennell, another registered holistic nutritionist. So those three ladies that you see on the, on the outside, um, those three ladies are going to be doing the next few webinars. And then Larissa Robinson, our triathlete um, and RMT and uh, a Bachelor's of Applied Science, she will be speaking tonight. So the guidebook support, so there are 80 new recipes, five of them for the fall. Um, I made Larissa's um, spicy coconut soup and it's delicious and it makes a lot. So I had leftovers and then we added some brown rice to it and it was so good. We had it for dinner a couple nights. 11 recipe chapters, including soups, which is great for the fall. There are year-round detox tips, so how to do it this time of year and enjoy it. And 25 pages of detox info and tips. What else do you get besides the guidebook? It is a PDF. There are print copies available, limited print copies available now. Uh, they will not be reprinted until the sixth edition in the spring. We do update the program every year. The bonuses that come with the program include menu plans, a grocery list, tips for eating out, how to juice without a blender or with a blender without a juicer, your weekly prep and your post pre and post detox checklists. There is also a private Facebook group for the support and you get a personal program coach. So if you would like to enroll or just to find out more information, please visit 30daywholebodydetox.com. Um, if you want to order, you click on order now, fill in your information and please do indicate the person who referred you they will take care of making sure you get the USANA supplements and all of the program bonuses, including the guidebook, um, once you've registered. And you can join us for a post-Canadian Thanksgiving start. So that's the intro to the program. I'd like to invite Larissa to join me now on the webinar. Video, you stopped it. Oh, sorry, I have to un unstop it. Sorry. There you go. Hi, there I am. There you are. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Yes. So I'll put this like over here now. <laughs> okay, so uh, Larissa, let's talk a little bit about, um, first of all, just tell us a bit about your background and sort of how you came across this detox program. So yeah, like Julie mentioned, I'm currently employed as a registered massage therapist. I have a strong chemistry background as a chemical engineer. And um, then as fun for a hobby, I race triathlons. Um, I've done three Ironman triathlons, a 
this summer in particular, I was a sprinter and that was fun to actually get to race fast again. Um, but I dedicate a fair amount of my time to exercise. I'm a fitness instructor part-time too. Um, and so working out is a big part of my life and I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you were introduced to USANA products um, through me, and it was the winter. I think you tried the vitamin D first, and then um, you, I believe you came to our live event. Yeah, so I came to the live event, and I came to the live event with kind of sugar in the back of my mind. I'd heard about people who give up sugar all the time, and I have to tell you as an athlete, I didn't really understand why people gave up sugar. Because as an athlete and as an endurance athlete in particular, like you intentionally eat sugar. And then I, I th and I would think about it and people would tell me how they gave up sugar, but they would still eat fruit. And it just, it didn't make sense to me because I'm like, fruit, fruit is still sugar. You're not really giving up sugar. I don't get it. And so I really wanted to go to the event to learn what is this thing that I'm missing that people are doing because it currently doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> and Thankfully, it was clarified, which is good news, right? Yeah, so I went to the event, and it was really great to hear the information that was there. It's very well done. And what I really took away from it is that um, refined sugar, which is what you're actually giving up, is the body reacts to refined sugar a little bit differently than it does to naturally occurring sugars, because naturally occurring sugars come in a package with support on how to deal with them yeah. and refined sugar just kind of shoots a whole bunch of sugar into your bloodstream and you know what if you happen to be in the middle of running a marathon I don't think that's such a bad thing mm -hmm. but the rest of the time um, it is actually kind of a bad thing and being an endurance athlete and being so used to having sugar during training I would admit that I ate a lot of it when I wasn't actually training partly because I thought I earned it um, yeah but my waistline wouldn't always agree with that assessment. Mm. And so sugar was a really big thing. I had oh, looked at other detoxes in the past and they all kind of scared me a little bit because a lot of times they weren't really real food um, or they would tell you to stop exercising. And to me, that was a deal break. <laughs> yeah. And that's the big thing is that um, we don't really spend a lot of time on exercise in the 30 day whole body detox. We recommend that you move every day and that you, you know, that you are active, but we don't actually comment either way on whether or not you can do this as an athlete. So I think Larissa is the first actual competitive athlete who was in training, um, who really did it. We've had other runners do it, but I think um, it's not quite this, probably not the same intensity as you would train when you're training for a triathlon. And, um, you know, I understand the whole sugar and triathlete thing because I'm also a former triathlete and I have done a few Ironmans as well. And you do feel like you can just get away with eating whatever you want because you're putting in so much mileage. But my waistline definitely did not agree with me. And until I learned how to change the way I was eating, um, I did not lose any weight. I trained for two Ironmans and never lost a single pound. So I get what you're saying because the sugar part for athletes is the hardest thing. And that's why I think more athletes should look at a program like this because um, a lot of athletes struggle with, you know, the extra weight. And I can tell you that doing a race 20 pounds lighter, doing my third Ironman 20 pounds lighter is a lot more enjoyable and easier on your joints. So tell us about your experience. Cause I remember at the beginning, um, tell me a little bit about like how you felt about posting pictures of what you were eating. Yeah, so that was actually really funny. So it's great that you have a Facebook support group and that people are sharing what, like their plates of food. And in the very beginning, I would not post my food because I was afraid. I was intimidated because my plates had so much more stuff on them <laughs> than anyone else. And I can't believe that's all people are eating. But that is one of the things that's nice about this program is that you have real food to eat and you can eat as much of that real food as you want. So you can have nourishment that is required as an athlete. You just have to be okay with the fact that your plate's going to be a little more full than the other people. <laughs> and the nice thing too is that we, you know, we give you the recipes, but you, as long as you stay within the program guidelines, you can also cook your own foods as well. It's more about the guidelines. And we don't really spend a lot of time on portion size because when you're eating the right foods that have fiber and protein and a healthy balance of healthy fat and carbohydrate, 
you don't need as much food to stay feeling fuller longer. So um, give us an idea of what you would do sort of post-workout, for example, during the detox program. So um, smoothies are kind of always a nice option, and that was fair. And, you know, the MySmart food that you get now is actually quite delicious. So I really would like post-workout food to have a MySmart shake with some peanut butter, um, a banana, and uh, some almond milk. That's kind of really delicious. If you want to be fancy, you can put cocoa powder in there. And for a little bit of sweetness, staying away from the sugar, sometimes I'd throw in some dried dates. And then some sea salt, because as a recovery thing, I kind of wanted a little bit of salt in there. So that was always kind of a nice, delicious go-to. Um, the other thing I really loved on the detox was eating sweet potatoes and um, roasted chickpeas. I ate a lot of those. And there was a lot of learning for me in the detox, having not having pasta and bread and things like that, um, when it came to balancing carb loading appropriately for endurance workouts, where I had to, you know eat more sweet potatoes than I was used to and have more quinoa and have the timing be a little bit better. It really helped me tune that up actually and reconnect oh. with my body. So that's a really cool point that you bring up. So if you, cause perhaps endurance athletes might be nervous about this because they're so used to their pastas and breads and those carbohydrates are, but they're burned very quickly. So what do you think, you know, for someone who's an endurance athlete, is it hard to adapt this program or is it, is it actually really beneficial for your training? I think it's actually really, really beneficial. Um, you get to like adapt it to your body. And what's nice about it is that you make a real connection to your body when you're doing this. And so you, you feel the difference of the fuel that you're putting into your body. Your food really does become fuel. Food's not fun. Um, it's fuel. It's nourishment. And you make that connection and you feel the difference. Um, so I could tell when I would have to go teach two-hour spin class um, that, you know, maybe I didn't have quite enough that one day. And actually learning to eat through that two-hour spin class without having a gel was another thing that was really interesting to learn. And in the long run, actually saves you quite a bit of money. Oh, interesting. So, okay. So tell me a little bit around that. Cause of course I hadn't even thought about that because if you were cutting out the refined sugar, you were changing some of the during workout. Yeah. So taking. I'm still a big fan of scratch and I would never get rid of that entirely. But during the 30 day whole body detox I did, I mixed um, honey in with my sports drink and some tea to kind of make a unrefined sugar sports drink. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, I did it for the 30 day whole body detox. I didn't entirely love it, but I I did that for the 30 day whole body detox, but some of the things I did love was having dried dates with sea salt on them instead of the chews and the gels, um, dried figs, big fan of dried figs, again, with a little bit of sea salt, they're delicious, um, really easy to actually just package up and go. And then every cyclist kind of knows that a banana is always a good go-to. <laughs> And so you add more of those things. And the nice thing about eating those kinds of things is after like a certain amount of gels and chews and technical food as you have it, you get this like mouth like grossness thing that starts to happen. <laughs> and when you eat real food, that doesn't happen. Well, that's a nice side effect. Yeah. And then cool. the other thing when you're eating the really technical food is you really have to balance it with your hydration. There's a real timing issue to not get gut rot and to not end up with abdominal cramps. And I didn't, I found for me personally, it was a lot easier to just have a banana or have dried dates and take a swig of water and not have to worry so much. I always had a hard time taking a whole gel because I just couldn't put enough water in my belly and then run on and be okay with it because it would get too swishy in there. Whereas I found real food a lot easier and there is more real food that I take with me now when I run or even when I cycle. Cool. That is really interesting. I had not even thought about that. What an interesting, oh, this is really fun. I'm learning lots from this webinar. So, um, okay. So the next big question I have to ask you about is the supplement side of things because you know, I've been around the, a lot of triathletes and runners who, for whatever reason, choose not to use nutritional supplements as a part of their regime. Myself, having done one Ironman without any supplementation and then two more with supplementation, I will always choose supplementation for myself for sure. But 
Tell me about that part of the detox because you did, I mean, not, you had taken, I think, one product or two maybe before, but then you took the whole kit and caboodle with the um, detox. Yeah, I had taken the two products before. I had taken, no, I had taken three. I had done the vitamin D, the Percosa, and I had done the South Essentials by themselves. The okay, easy. you had started on them. Okay. Um, but I hadn't tried the fish oils or any of those other things. And, and so I went all in. And part of the reason I decided to go all in is I liked some of the benefits that we talk about in terms of, you know, managing inflammation. Like as an athlete, who doesn't want to do that? Um, and the idea of the liver support supplement, um, I liked that idea. And I liked the challenge of giving up caffeine. I would say that that's, that's something that I actually do every winter before I did this is that I would go through a period where I would give up caffeine, but then I'd always want it back eventually. Um, but giving up caffeine and having that liver support supplement with it, the liver support supplement was kind of the one that was most attractive to me when I first heard about the detox. Um, and that's partly to do with heavy metals. Um, like I love my salmon and my tuna. I eat a lot of those things. And I do know that part of the side effect is heavy metals, but I've never actually heard of a way that you can actually get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. So having the HEPA there to actually help your liver actually purge heavy metals that have been sitting in your system for a long time, that was a really attractive bonus for me. Um, I'd tried fish oils in the past and I never really liked them because they made me burp. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give these a try. I've had really good success with what I've tried so far. So I will try it. And I had used probiotics in the past and I'd have to say that I didn't really notice much of a difference, but the science and the chemistry and the idea of an endurance athlete of having a more healthier gut and, you know, a more stable gut and not having gut issues in a race yeah. that certainly appealed to me. So that was another product that I was like, yes, I wanted to do this at one point. So why not do them all right now? <laughs> Just Get them, get them all out of the way. Get them all out of the way. Now, did you find that, so you did the um, program in April before race season. So did you find that, um, so you changed what sort of the foods that you were eating. Did you find that compared to like other years, especially if it's sprint, I find you can have gut issues with endurance. It's different gut issues than sprint because sprint is sometimes about your gut just totally tightens up because you're, you're going at a higher rate. So how did you find like your gut was dealing with racing after you'd done a detox sort of in the, in the pre-race season? Um, I would say that I don't have a horrible gut to start. Oh. I have had gut issues, but it's never been gut wrenching. Um, <laughs> uh, but what I, but I, I would say that I deal with the odd abdominal cramp that comes up in a race and in a sprint, you're actually a lot more prone to that particular cramp. And I remember going through the transition and doing brick workouts in advance of that. And there was just a sense of calmness that was there. That was just really nice to have. And you get off the bike and you'd go through that change of position. And there wasn't that like wobble that happens in your tummy that I would say has happened in previous <laughs> experiences well this is interesting because i'm really curious because i'm planning to get back to racing this year so uh, i'll be curious to see i have not this program didn't exist when i did my last iron man i'm certainly not doing any iron man so it's not getting any ideas but i'm curious to see because i did have severe gut issues and one of the issues i had turned out to be my complete intolerance to gluten and that's another thing that we should mention for athletes is some athletes might be going through gut pain in a race because they're intolerant to gluten and they're not aware of it. And it is like when you're in a race, it's 10 times worse. Like one of my go-to foods, which is a go-to food for a lot of endurance athletes was a wrap with a banana and Nutella, you know, and I would have that as in my bike, like my bike box, my bento box. And then, um, you know, I would eat, I would always refuel with like crackers and bagels and all kinds of stuff after the race. And every single time I would race for hours and hours, I was in extreme gut pain. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to suggest this to athletes who might, this might actually help their gut issues overall because they might not know that they're intolerant to gluten. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll definitely be um, putting together a group now fall. Why would an athlete, why would now be a good time for an athlete in particular to do a fall detox program? Well, 
like for the triathletes and fall is kind of a natural downtime in your season, which like I would say as much as we're saying this is doable as an athlete, I mean, when you're on the HEPA and your body is purging those heavy metals in the first couple of weeks, you do notice it and you do not feel awesome. <laughs> you feel awesome later. But in the beginning, there is an adjustment period where you don't entirely feel awesome. And, you know, it was nice for me being the instructor of a class because I kind of can't just decide to hit snooze on the alarm clock and not go in. But there were days where I was tempted. (laughs) And uh, so, like, you're not going to do a detox, I would say, immediately before a race because you have pretty prime, important, heavy loading training that's coming up to that and then the taper. Um, and your taper just isn't long enough to do a 30-day whole body detox. Yeah. You need a reasonable time where you don't have any A performances being scheduled right. um, because you are still going to train, but you are not going to go out and deliver your top performance while you're also trying to clean your body all at the same time. Mm. That just doesn't make sense to load those two things on top of each other. So the fall is a nice time for an athlete who does not have a race coming up or a performance or whatever your event or your tournament is, is you want a little bit of space between that. The marathon runners who are getting ready for like the fall marathons, Now probably wouldn't be the best time. February might be a great time for them. Um, But for triathletes who are coming off the triathlete season and don't have one of those, then, hey, now is a beautiful time. (laughs) Yeah, and I think you and I will probably work um, with the triathlete community that we know here in town for an early spring detox program for 2017 Um, early enough that it's not going to, you know, it's going to be at least 30 days out from anybody's first race of the season, but really allow them to, you know, reap the benefits of doing this clean eating program and still training, but then just feeling their best. So there's one last thing that I wanted to ask you about. Well, I think it's the last question, but um, we might think of more. Um, You, so I didn't mention this earlier, but we have the new USANA cell essentials. So the formula has been upgraded since you did the detox. It just got upgraded in August. So now the new, the two bottles, I'll go back to that slide. So the two bottles on the far left, the, they're now called core mineral, core mineral and Vita antioxidant. They have this new intelligence technology, which actually um, is a cell signaling technology. And it actually does three amazing things, triple protection, nourish, protect, and renew. So it nourishes your cells, which it always did. It provides extra antioxidant pr- protection by signaling your body's own antioxidant um, protection, which is incredible. And it renews um, the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, so you actually have more energy. So I'm curious, you mentioned something interesting um, after you started the Cell Essentials at when you were teaching one of your spinning classes. Yeah, so I started taking the Cell Essentials and like Julie says, one of the bonuses is renewal and the renewal in particular actually relates to getting you more energy and making you more efficient. And so I've been on the Cell Essentials for a little while and I'm teaching a class that I always teach and um, I thought I was doing a good job and someone came up to me afterwards and they're like, Larissa, what are you doing? Because you have so much more energy. You're just happier now. <laughs> Did something happen? Like they thought I got like married or something wonderful happened in my life. And it wasn't. I it was just self essentials and I was just in a good mood and I had nice, me- good focus for them. And I was high energy for every single class. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so good. And that's the thing is like the majority of our clients that have switched over are noticing right away the amount of energy they have that they didn't have before. And we had this come up at a seminar we did, you know, does this going to keep me from sleeping? But um, you had a really good answer to that question. Um, Yeah. So sometimes when you experience higher energy, you then think, Hey, well, how will I actually lie down and go to sleep? And my answer to that question is the energy production you're getting here is not artificial. It's entirely from being efficient within your cells and it's not disrupting any sort of systems you have going on in your body. And so when it comes time for your body to recognize that it's time to go to sleep and you provide it with all those signals like lying down and having a slightly cooler temperature and turning the lights off, your body recognizes, hey, it's time to go to sleep. And you go to sleep. You're not wired. You're naturally fueled. 
I love it. You're what I like about Larissa is she explains things in a really great way that people understand. So I, I'm going to quickly share something. So give me one minute. Um, I'm going to stop. So it'll just be us for a minute. Let me, I'm going to pull something out that I want to share with, as we wrap this up, I just didn't have it open. One moment, please. Well, you pull that up. The other yeah. thing I think I wanted to mention was about, um, um, athletes get really prone to getting sick and getting colds all the time. And it was really cool when we got to hear Michaela Mickelson talk at convention about how she wasn't getting sick when the rest of the hockey team Canada was getting mm -hmm. sick. And she yeah. attributed a lot of it to USANA South Centrals. I would say I'm fairly used to getting a spring cold and um, I didn't have one. Mm. Which is and awesome. You could say, hey, maybe that's it. Maybe that's not it. Um, it's hard to know, um, but uh, as an athlete, you do want to wear, wear off the sickness and you are at a higher risk um, of dealing with that sickness. So I agree. all the more reason. I agree. So exciting news. So if you enjoyed uh, hearing Larissa and I chat tonight and um, the way that uh, Larissa really knows her stuff when it comes to science, but explains it in a way that everyone can understand. We will be speaking live on Tuesday, October 23rd, uh, 25th. That is wrong. It is the 25th of October, but it is the Tuesday. I just realized there's a typo on the poster, so I'll fix that before I post it. 7 to 9 p.m. at the Burlington Golf and Country Club. And you will get an overview of um, all of USANA. So you'll learn about the company and the background and where it came from and, and how our business works. But then you get a, a full, um, about 45 minute overview of this new intelligence technology with Larissa and uh, Carrie Taylor, PhD, who dives really deep into the science, but it's really, really exciting stuff. So uh, the Eventbrite site is set up. It is set up for the correct day. And uh, if you are watching this and you are not associated with USANA and you'd like to come as a guest, guess what? Your ticket is free. And right now it's only $10 early bird. If you're watching this, it's October 5th. Um, the early bird goes until right the week before, which is October 18th. So was there anything else you want to add, Larissa, before we wrap things up? No, I think we talked about everything I was thinking about. <laughs> okay, amazing. I'm just going to go back to um, end with the detox. So if you are looking for more info and you want to sign up, please visit this website and we'll be happy to be of service. Thanks, Larissa. Have a wonderful night. Thanks, Julie. You too. <laughs>